Good afternoon, Pudding River Wine Cellars fans. Thanks for joining me on our YouTube channel today. I'm sitting here on the, the banks of the lovely Pudding River, um, drinking a glass of Pudding River Rosé. Uh, I figured I'd do a short lesson on the history of Rosé for you while the weather is so nice and we're we are social distancing and rosé is always a nice way to just relax, right? It's a, a van de soif, otherwise it's just something good to drink, served as an aperitif or on its own. Um, uh, in all actuality, some of the earliest wines uh, noted in history are rosés and uh, it's it goes back to ancient Greece and they were field blends. Um, of red and white grapes that were uh, then diluted. Uh, red wines were often too tannic and bitter for people to even drink, so they would dilute it with a little bit of um, seawater or, uh, or, or, or resin or something to kind of dilute the flavor. After that, you have the Fossans that actually bring grapes to what is now modern day Marseille and they start doing some of the same things. So they are also doing field blends, which kind of turns into a nice pink style um, wine that is a little bitter because of, cor of course they're getting tannins from the skins. Uh, shortly thereafter, the Romans come and they've already heard about a lot of the wines from th these pink wines from Marseille. And um, uh, they become very popular. Again, the 19th century sees kind of a rise in um, pink wines by uh, French tourists who flock to the Mediterranean and find these these beautiful pink wines. You think about the rosés of Provence, which are very light in color, very dry, really crisp and refreshing, light aromatic, white flower, grapefruit, um, wild strawberry, just really delicious. Uh, you do have a, a downfall of rosé for those of us that are old enough to remember um, Sutter Home White Zinfandel. And it wasn't so much that, Americans actually flocked to the Sutter Home Whites Inn because they loved the sweetness of it, uh, which, which was uh, reported to actually be an accident where there was a stuck fermentation and it remained a little bit sweet. When they released it to the public, it was a hit. So then we have the rise of White Zinfandel. Um, as a sommelier for many years, there was a period of time where no one drank or talked about rosé and it was not on wine lists and it was relatively hard to find because it just had the connotation that it was pink and sweet. Uh, now of course we have multiple styles and we are so much happier that things are made in a more dry style. Even for those of you that tend to like sweeter rosés, oftentimes these rosés can work for you just as well. Um, the Pudding River Rosé is 100% Rosé of Pinot Noir. It is from our estate, all Pomard Clone. Um, so really beautiful color, see? Uh, made in a dry style, although it does have some very aromatic um, red flower notes to it, some uh, ripe strawberry, some uh, candied raspberry. Uh, but then on the palate, I definitely get quite a bit of uh, dryness, not too sweet, with a little bit of uh, ruby red grapefruit, which I always kind of catch on the back palate, but really great acidity and just a really fun wine for um, those of us that are sitting by the river having a glass of rosé. Today is the perfect day. Please remember we are still taking curbside orders, so you can, um, you can swing by and pick up a few bottles or a case uh, whenever you'd like. You can just email info at puddingriver.com. You can email me as well at alexa at puddingriver.com and we hope to talk to you soon. Cheers.